I'm Jennifer Bilbrey, and this is On Our Minds, a podcast and vlog about psychotherapy in Austin, Texas. Today, I'm interviewing Dave Kaplowitz. He's an Austin-based psychotherapist specializing in couples and group work. We'll talk about the unique way he works, and we'll also get to talk about narcissism. So what I really want to talk, the juicy thing I want yes. to talk about yes. is narcissism. Okay. Okay, let's yes. talk about that. <laughs> let's, let's talk about narcissism. And we may or may not mention Donald Trump. Well, it's hard to talk about narcissism these days without talking about Donald Trump, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, so much in the news, and uh, a lot of uh, therapists and non-therapists like to label him. Yes, right. So because of that, there's so much more information and discussion out there about narcissism. Yeah, and misinformation. Yeah, a lot, yes. right? That I'm hearing it uh, more and more from people mm -hmm. using that term mm -hmm. and just real comfort and a, a feeling of uh, knowledge and familiarity about that term, you mm -hmm. know, about what it means. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so what I want to talk with you about, because I know a little bit about the way you work and about the way you think about this, it, it is the idea of a spectrum mm -hmm. yeah. when it comes to narcissism. Yeah, and yeah, so you know, the way, you know, the way I, I work with people is I, I typically don't like to diagnose people. I don't think it's helpful. Yeah. Um, sometimes for insurance, we have to give some kind of diagnosis. That's another story. Yes. But um, I, I want to, like, you know, I want to understand people. And I want to understand everybody's complexity, because as human beings, we're all very extremely complicated, right? Yes. Extremely complicated. Yes. Sometimes people don't see themselves as complicated, which I was just going to say, even the ones that don't think they are, they are, yeah, they are, maybe especially are, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe especially are, <laughs> um, but for whatever reason, they come to think of themselves as not complicated. Yeah. But you know, just like we have, uh, you know, physical organs, we have a heart, we have lungs. We have brain, we have a spine, mm -hmm. right? Everybody has all these different parts of their psychological anatomy, Yes. right? We all have emotions. Even if we'd like to think we don't, right. uh, we all have them, yeah. right? And there's the core emotions, right? We all can be mad, we can all be sad, we might not usually, and much of the problem that people have in their relationships is not with their emotions, but their feelings about their emotions. Oh, uh-huh, right? yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, so I don't like to diagnose people, but um, the way I like, you know, there, people do have problems with narcissism and oftentimes uh, people come into their, my office and saying, you know, this person is a narcissist, uh -huh. right? This person right next to me. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, to me, that's not that helpful because it's a type of labeling. It's, a, it's actually a type of name calling, Yeah. right? And when we think about, you know, these diagnoses like narcissistic personality disorder, right? Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, this idea of narcissism, it was a, a term coined by Freud uh, 100 years ago, over 100 years ago, based on the myth of Nar Narcissus, who looked into this pond and saw his own, uh, his own reflection and fell in love with it. And I think it's, it, it's a bit of a mistake to think about uh, a narcissist as being in love with themselves, right? Because love is actually a very relational ex feeling. And the, the feeling we get when we have loving feelings towards someone is uh, not the same feeling uh, when we think of ourselves as awesome, mm -hmm. right? Yes, it's true. Right. Um, and, and even this idea about, uh, you know, ego being egocentric and being uh, grandiose and being arrogant, right? That tends to be something that's very tightly associated with narcissism. And I, I think it's a mistake, actually, to, 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 it's something that you often see, but it's Often, sometimes you don't. There are some very uh, humble people that might appear that are, are actually pretty humble that can be very uh, selfish or self-absorbed. Right. And that is the way I because like. Because we all have those parts of us. Right. Every single one of us. Every single one of us yeah. can be selfish. That's right. right. And in one of the problems people have in marriages is this me versus we problem. Uh -huh. Right. It is one of those pro It is one of those marital problems that is unsolvable. Yeah. Right, you yeah. cannot solve it. Yep. But we do have to learn to work with it, mm -hmm. and usually and in, talk about it. And talk about it. That's mm -hmm. the way 
we work with it by talking about it, yeah. right? That's the way, and that's why uh, therapy, especially this sort of exploratory therapy, is really well suited to these unsolvable problems. Because this gets back to your question earlier about how the therapist is so great at solving problems, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. It's great until you end up with an unsolvable <laughs> yeah, problem, right? Right, which is really, point. which is really what, ther what therapy is uniquely suited for. It's the unsolvable problems that we have in life. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I've never thought about it like that. That's yeah. so true. Yeah, that's the way I and and it's uh -huh. sort of and that's when th and that's if you approach therapy as a therapist by helping people solve their problems, right? You put yourself in a real bind when you get to a problem that can't be solved, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because it does, it creates because you have all these expectations, and then you let the person down, and then you don't even know as a therapist you don't even know what to do, right? Because you're screwed. I'm like, I don't know. Give me a better problem. You know, let's, yes. let's, 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 let's yeah. talk about Johnny doing his homework. I can help you I with that. I can help you with that, you with that. I know one. Exactly what to do. You know, the problem about you, uh, you know, uh, not thinking, you know, you're good looking enough, or not being able to be a, fa you know, not tall enough to be a fashion model, yeah. or not being able right. to be an astronaut. <laughs> I can't help you with that. <laughs> Sorry, you know. So getting back to the narcissism yes, issue, yes. right? Which is, which is uh, like, you, like you said, we all have issues with becoming uh, overly self-absorbed, right? We all have issues with, uh, you know, getting a little too focused on me. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, also oftentimes, you know, being uh, a little selfish, mm -hmm. right? But, yeah. it, but it, like you said, it's, uh, everything's very much on a spectrum, right? And most people, when they make the statement, you know, you're being selfish, you know, what they really mean is you hurt my feelings. Yeah. Because you ate that last piece of pie. Right. And you told me that you'd save it for me. Yes. And I came home. It was really late. I had a long day. I was thinking about that, that piece pie of all pie all day. All day. <laughs> And I get there, and all I and you know what? You didn't even take the plate out of the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. You left the plate with the saran, with the wrap, saran wrap and the crumbs <laughs> and the fork and the fork. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And you left your dirty fork in the sink <laughs> yeah. for me to clean up. Yeah. You really hurt my feelings. Uh -huh. And guess what? I'm furious at you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, you and know, so that's the conversation you're helping people have. That's the conversation. The, instead of, yes, you're instead such a narcissist. Of, you're such or, a narcissist. Or, yeah. or he's uh, a narcissist, or she is, or you yeah. are, or I am. or. Why do you think it's so tempting for especially therapists to diagnose Trump? Yeah, because, I mean, it's well... It's such a seductive conversation yeah, or idea. It, it, it is. It yeah. is. It's very seductive, and I, and I think it uh, it's very problematic, and it, it really, I find it very upsetting, actually, Okay. I think, um, because of a few reasons. I th in terms of why it's so easy, right? It's, it's, well, it's, it's, he kind of makes it easy. He kind of makes it easy, mm -hmm. right? But it's also, this is what the kinds of things we think about all day, right? We have these diagnostic systems that from my perspective are there to help us understand our, our clients, right? Because uh, human, human behavior is, it, it, it sort of fall, it, you can sort of, the way I like to look at it is sort of symptoms clump together. They tend to come. They they come with their friends, uh -huh. right? And they're sort of similar symptoms, and they tend to clump. And what we do is we take these clumps, and when we like to label them as a thing. Yes. But in fact, it's not really a thing. Yeah. And in fact, this 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 system of sort of saying I couldn't agree more. you have narcissistic personality and I don't, yeah. because you have five out of nine symptoms and I have only four. Right. Therefore, you are. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not. Yeah. That misses the point completely. Completely. Right. It misses the fact that it is on a spectrum. And in fact, a couple years ago, uh, they were working on a diagnostic system that, it, that, that put some of these, these traits like narcissism on a spectrum. Yeah. But unfortunately, I think they were, the people that were doing it were a little bit narcissistic. And they thought they could ram it through ah. this controversial issue. And they, they got so much blowback, they just took the old system yeah. from the DSM-4 and plunked it back into the DSM-5 un, un, unchanged. But there are some of these other systems that um, see these things more on a uh, spectrum. And, um, and so getting back to your question, which is, the, so we, we have this system at our, at our disposal, and most of us there, most, not all, but many, let's say many therapists are uh, upset that uh, this person who seems to uh, exemplify many of these traits that we find abhorrent uh, and that we spend a lot of time working with our, our clients to sort of take the rough edges off of and to work on that tend to be anti-relational in our, in our view as therapists, um, that he got elected, he has, he's the most powerful person in the world, 
all of these problems that we think he had doesn't bother him at all. Yes. Right? And we get very distressed. Yeah. And so what we do is we... Because we, we think they should. We think they should yeah. bother him. And, and we, we don't think he should be president. And, yeah. and I don't think it's helpful because I think, well, you know, if, if a therapist has an issue, they should, you know, use political means and, you know, write if they want to, mm -hmm. you know, call their senators, call the White House, demonstrate, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, and I think this sort of name calling, which yeah. I see could of diagnosing him because... One of the ethical uh, aspects of being a therapist is we don't diagnose people unless they're in our office. Right. Right. And as far as I know, Donald Trump is not presented for therapy. Right. <laughs> he certainly hasn't come to me. I think it's a good bet that for, he's not. For therapy. And he's not yeah. going to. Right. Be and one of the criteria for diagnosing uh, uh, any kind of personality disorder is that this is causing problems for the person with the disorder. Mm -hmm. Right. And as far as I can tell... He, uh, he's yeah. a billionaire, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's the most powerful guy in the world. Yeah. His family seems to be pretty happy. Yeah. People are close to him, his mm -hmm. family, right? Mm -hmm. They don't seem to mind. In fact, they're uh, you know, having all the spoils yes. of his business and his political success. Seems to be working out. Seems to be working yeah. out. And yeah. so, you know, who am I to diagnose this guy? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I agree that it's, it presents this paradox because a lot of us as therapists also don't want to pathologize people. Yeah. But we except also, the ones we don't like. Exactly. Right? That's exactly right. We don't want to right. pathologize that's, people that's except the ones we don't like. Going. Then yes. we want to then, then we then, want to yeah. call him names. Right. Right. And that that just Which contributes is, to to the the splitting. Exactly. You know, he you know he calls you know uh, immigrants certain names. We call politicians certain names. Right. It's not helpful. And it happens in marriages too. Yeah. 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 And so it's one of the things I it's try to help people with, right? Mm -hmm. uh, even though you might think your partner is a terrible person, right? If they're a piece of crap, you know, lower than scum, right? That's name calling. Uh -huh. It's an, it's an, it's a it's a personal attack, yeah. Right. And one of the things that I teach couples, I teach people in group, is not to name call, right? But what am I what am I feeling towards you right now? Yeah. I'm angry with you. Yeah. You know, use mm -hmm. some tone, mm -hmm. right? Not just. Yes, I'm angry yes, with I'm you. Yes, I'm angry. <laughs> That's not progressive emotional communication. Yeah, yeah. It's not an. It's not an emotion. Yeah. If someone someone might say that, uh -huh. and I'll say, and I might say to them, "Oh, that's I, I hear that you're saying you're angry, but I'm not feeling, feeling it right it. now, and yeah. I'm curious about that mm -hmm. because your words and and your tone are not matching up. Help me understand that, mm -hmm. and then we're off. Yeah. Because there's always something behind it. Yeah. Right? There's always always there. So even if they're saying the word and I'm not feeling it. And then they might say, yeah, you're right, Dave. I'm, I'm not feeling mad. Right? You're right. I'm not feeling mad. I'm, I'm feeling really sad. Yeah. And then, oh, then that will land. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Yeah, sounds, I see that now. Yeah, I see that mm -hmm. now. Tell me about your sad. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we go from there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome. It was a blast. I'm Jennifer Bilbrey, and this has been On Our Minds, a podcast and vlog about psychotherapy in Austin, Texas. Please visit my website at jenniferbilbrey.com for more episodes and for more information. Thank you.